and welcome back to my kitchen. But in case this is the first time you're stopping by, my name is Gina and I'm a wife and mother from the Midwest and I enjoy cooking fresh meals for my family. And sometimes I make videos of my recipes and I post them here on YouTube. So today we are going to be showing you how to be, I don't know who we is. We is me, me Gina. So I am going to be showing you how to make a quick and easy weeknight paleo turkey taco bowl. Um, I'm super sorry about the lack of videos that I've been posting this last like two or three weeks, but I've been trying to eat super clean. Uh, my digestion was just like not on its best point after eating a bunch of crap all winter and I put on a few pounds and I'm just trying to get back to a place where my body and mind are comfortable so I've been cooking healthier um, but this dish is actually really delicious and it's very easy so um, I just thought I would share it regardless of whether or not you like the paleo diet or you're just trying to eat clean or you just want a vegetable forward uh, take on a weeknight dinner this is definitely something you'd want to give a try um, so I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our ingredients. Uh, first of all, you're going to see I have like a plethora of spices out here, and that's because of the diet that I am following is very specific in regards to like thickeners and gums and starches um, and what is included and what is excluded in the diet. So if you are not on the paleo diet, um, I would highly recommend just getting a package of your favorite taco seasoning, which mine is McCormick. You guys know that. I love the McCormick original taco seasoning or the hot taco seasoning. Um, so I would probably get two packages for this recipe and use one for the cauliflower and one for the turkey. So anyways, our ingredients today um, are about a pound of ground turkey and I have 93% lean and 7% fat so I find that this is a good mix for this. Um, I have a bag of rice cauliflower and this is just from Aldi's. It com comes like this. Um, it is, let's see here, 12 ounces. Um, for your reference, I'm going to be using a bell pepper. You can use whatever color you have on hand. I've got a white onion. Um, and then for our, our, both our rice and our turkey, we are going to be using some tomato paste. Um, some garlic powder, granulated onion, coriander, cumin, chili powder, salt and pepper, oregano, and smoked paprika. And I forgot to pull out, let's see here, let's see my cabinets, guys. Where is it? Here we go. Apple cider vinegar. We're gonna need a quarter cup of apple, of apple cider vinegar, guys. Jeez. Apple cider vinegar um, for our turkey. It'll add a nice acidic bite to it. Um, and then for serving, I'm going to be just throwing some spinach in the bowl, um, some cherry tomatoes, and some chopped up avocado. But you're more than welcome to make guacamole or add, a, you know, fresh cilantro, salsa, whatever toppings you and your family like on your taco bowls. So. I'm going to go ahead and I think we are going to get started with our turkey because I always like to get the uncooked meat away from things that I might be possibly serving raw um, as soon as possible. So let me go ahead and get out um, a frying pan and another pan and I will be back when we're ready to start adding stuff to the pot. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I diced up our onion, and I've got half of it sitting here on the side because um, that'll be used for our cauliflower rice. And then in a large skillet, I have the other half of the onion and our bell pepper, which is just diced up. And I'm going to go ahead and just saute these until the onions are translucent. Translucent? English is really hard for me today. Um, translucent, which should take about three to five minutes depending on your heat. I've got it over a nice medium heat. And then we will add um, our ground turkey to the pan and we'll stir fry everything until the ground turkey is nice and brown um, before we begin adding in the rest of our spices. Okay, so onions had gotten translucent. I did forget to mention, of course, as always when you're cooking, I added um, about a tablespoon or two of um, oil to the pan before I started my onions and my peppers. So please keep in mind that, <coughs> excuse me, you will need to do that. I used avocado oil today, but you could use olive oil, you could use vegetable oil, you can use whatever you like. Um, we're just going to go ahead and brown this, breaking apart as we go. I like nice and small pieces. Like, I just don't enjoy chunks of ground meat. For some reason, it's just a weird thing. So, I, like, really whack at it. I enjoy cooking ground meat in general with, like, a spatula or with this. So, I can, like, hold it like this. And a lot of times, like, I chop it up um, as I go. But that's pretty obnoxious, I'm sure, in the speaker. So, we're going to move on. I thought that I would review our 
spice profile for you guys because uh, I'm just going to dump it in. I went ahead and pre-measured it because it's way too hard for me to scoop with one hand while I'm on camera. So what I have here is um, this is a tablespoon of cumin. This is a tablespoon of chili powder. You just can't tell because it's underneath there. And then the remaining spices here, with the exception of black pepper, are in half teaspoon quantities. I just tried to make it easy for you. So this is a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of coriander, um, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and a half teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of oregano. And then lastly, this is a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Um, and I just was thinking now, this would be really good with chipotle powder in there. So if you have chipotle, go ahead and toss a little bit in there, or you could substitute the coriander for chipotle powder if you don't have it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue browning this, and I'll be back when we are going to add the spices, our apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of tomato paste to this turkey meat, um, and that'll be done. Right now we're just waiting for this to brown and all of this extra liquid to evaporate. So give me a few minutes and I will be back. All right, so as you can see, uh, most of the liquid has evaporated. Um, most of the time I would actually let this go a little bit longer because I prefer the meat to be a little bit browner, but I'm kind of really hungry, so <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and start adding stuff right now. So the first thing we're going to do is add uh, the apple cider vinegar, and this is my favorite kind because this actually has, well, I just shook it, the mother in it, um, which if you're for familiar with like kombucha um, or different types of like fermented vinegars, they are produced by... Uh, a mother, I guess it's like a fungus or bacteria. It's a SCOBY and anyways, just Google it if you're interested in that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pour off a quarter cup of the apple cider vinegar and we're going to add that to the pan and we are going to let that burn off. Uh, I feel like turkey is slightly gamey, believe it or not, but I'm very sensitive to meat. As you guys know, I was vegan for a while. Um, and just for some reason, ever since I started eating meat again, I am even more sensitive to the taste, smells, and textures that come with being a meat and game eater. Uh, so I just find that adding a little bit of the vinegar uh, kind of helps mask and or remove any gamey or poultry-esque flavor that is in the ground turkey. Next thing we're going to do is add about two tablespoons of tomato paste, which I forgot to measure out, so hang on. One. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So, sorry about that, guys. Uh, this is about two tablespoons, give or take, of tomato paste. Um, don't throw that away because we're going to be using it for our cauliflower rice. And right now we're just going to go ahead and try to work in this tomato paste and wake it up because it's been sitting in a can. I always remember hearing Rachel Ray say that when I would watch it when I was homesick from school that tomato paste is sleeping in the can and you have to make sure to fry it in the pan and wake up the flavor before you continue. So, so I do it. trying a new type of video filming guys this is using a live focus feature on my camera and I'm hoping that it has less focusing issues while I'm like jumping around and stirring and stuff so if you like it better go ahead and let me know down in the comments or if you prefer my traditional way of good old-fashioned normal camera filming all right cool here we go I am going to go ahead and add our box of spices, bowl of spices, whatever. And then I'm actually going to add about a quarter of a cup of water because it looks like it needs it. Smells really good, guys. Yep, 
needs a little bit more water so it can simmer. So that would be a total of a half of a cup of water. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just spread this out in the pan, make sure everything is fully mixed in off camera, um, and set it to the side on low heat to simmer while I get the rest of our ingredients for our cauliflower rice going. All right, so I had added some onion um, and uh, avocado oil to a different pan, and as you can tell, they are slightly burnt because my children had moved both of their bunk beds across the room and locked me out. So I almost burned dinner, but in any case, these are okay. These are just really deeply caramelized and they'll actually just add extra flavor to our cauliflower rice. So you can do this or you could just sweat them. It's up to you. This was a total accident. Um, and next thing is to add some more tomato paste. I'm going to start off with about two tablespoons again. pan is like rocket hot because I left it and I had to go and figure out what my children were doing. And then I also have our spices, which is a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, a whole teaspoon of cumin, um, about a teaspoon actually of salt, and a half of a teaspoon of onion powder. Um, I'm going to jiggle this in here. And then please note, like... My seasoning directions in regards to foods are usually a guideline, um, like especially in regards to salt and pepper. Everybody's flavor profile is different. Everybody's family likes you know different spice combinations. Um, and specifically in regards to salt, like you can easily remove salt, but you, or put salt. That did not sound good. You can easily add more salt, but you you can't remove it. So better to undersalt than to oversalt. So I just whacked the bag of the cauliflower rice on the counter a couple of times um, so that it would separate the grains. And then now I'm going to add probably about a half a cup of water again just so we can get everything well incorporated. We should go check on the girls. You guys want to come and check on the girls with me and see what trouble they're making right now? Because uh, it was not good. They literally moved their beds across the room. And let's see. Let's see what they're doing, guys. Are you moving your beds again? Yeah. I told you not to move your beds. I love to. Just because we're washing sheets doesn't mean that this is the theme park. Just Behave. Oh yeah, yeah, guys. It's been a long day here in the Herrera house. <clears throat> if you guys can believe it, I'm still getting rid of that cold. It is now March, and I got sick in December, and I still have a cough. All right, so everything is well incorporated. Tastes pretty good. Needs a little pepper. I didn't add any pepper before. Where is the pepper? Here it is. Um, go ahead and add probably about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Um, I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to dust it in there. And then we are going to raise our heat up. And basically just try to dry this out so that it is a rice-like consistency and it's not mush because you don't want to cook it over low heat because the cauliflower is already cut into very small grains um, and it'll overcook very easily so I found that it's best to raise the heat up to medium high high and kind of just fry the crap out of it so I'm gonna go ahead and get this done and uh, go discipline my children yet again and I will be back to show you the final product okay so here is our finished cauliflower rice um, as you can see there's no liquid in the bottom of the pan when you move stuff around um, it is not fried crispy or burnt or anything but it's still in very separate pieces um, and it looks very much like Mexican arroz rojo um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat on this I've chopped up a couple of uh, accoutrements over here for it so I've got some avocado some cherry tomatoes that I just sliced um, 
lengthwise, so they're kind of cute, or I don't know, I guess that's widthwise. And then I've got some spinach that I just kind of rolled up and uh, did a chiffonade on, so that way I'll put this in the bottom of the bowl and it will wilt. And it'll give us a full veggie forward, protein, delicious, easy weeknight meal. Let me get everything plated up. All right, guys, we had to come on camera early before my husband got home because, no, show us what you were eating. Is that good? You like it? Olivia likes the turkey taco meat. And Olivia is like queen of picky eaters, barely eats anything. I was shocked. She was over here smacking her lips and eating it before I even sat down. So anyways, here is our finished product. Daniel's is a little bit cuter, so I'll show you his. Like, I don't know, I couldn't figure out a good way to arrange it, but hopefully it comes across nicely in the pictures. Um, so we've got our cauliflower rice, which is right here. We've got our ground beef or ground beef, ground turkey, taco meats. I've got the spinach over here and then just some um, cherry tomatoes and the avocado. And then I'm going to be eating mine with some salsa cruda, which is basically um, salsa verde, but it's, it's cruda. It's raw. So you uh, basically just blend it without cooking it. It's really fresh tasting and delicious. Um, very clean and it will be good on this. Uh, if you are not following the paleo diet or you know any specific form of diets that omit cheese, I would highly recommend some shredded cheddar on there, maybe a little sour cream. Um, it will be delish, so. Mom, huh. want, 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 want cheese. You want cheese? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you cheese for yours. Let me taste test it. Ground turkey is flame. Really, really good. You're eating applesauce now. Stop faking. Anyways, turkey is delicious. Let's try our cauliflower rice. Sorry, I don't have a taste test from Daniel. He got stuck in traffic on his way home from work. This cauliflower rice is absolutely delicious. Go with the full teaspoon of salt. Don't be scared. Um, the frozen cauliflower rice has no seasoning on it whatsoever unless you buy like a garlic herb one accidentally, which this was plain. So this is perfect. And then now I'm just going to mix everything up so this gets wilted down a little bit, add some salsa, and finish up my dinner. Um, That's applesauce. It's not salsa, babe. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video of how to make easy weeknight. It'll be your turn in one second. One second, okay? Uh, thank you for stopping by my channel and watching this super simple video on how to make paleo turkey taco bowls. I hope you enjoyed it. Girls, shh. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. Can you do a thumbs up, girls? There we go. And if you really, really liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel. I get a total kick out of watching my subscriber list grow and my little community. I just can't believe that you guys continuously tune into my little videos and make my recipes and like them and are supportive. And yeah, clearly I'm excited. So anyways, thank you so much for stopping by and have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Here's a peace out. Bye-bye. Peace out. Peace out. Bye, guys. <laughs>